Welcome to this video on Deployer. Deployer is a language of data manipulation which consists of various verbs like select, arrange, filter, mutate, summarize, and many more, which can be used to make simple or complicated data manipulation commands. And in this video, we'll be focusing on the select command. If you're using the Deployer for the first time, you would need to go and install it. So click on the Packages tab and type the name of the package and click on the Install button. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing would be to call the library dplyr. So let me run this command and create a data set. So if you go to the description, you would see the link to the code where you can actually see all these commands. So you really don't have to follow each and every command. So here is our data set. And there is this admitting hospital information. We have gender, age, and various other information like diagnostic codes, etc. So let's get started by using this data set. Now, before we start any further, because this is the first video in this series of dplyr, I just want to show you the, the power of dplyr. And it might look a bit complicated if you're using it for the first time, but uh, believe me, it's just a matter of learning the language and then just creating simple sentences from the words. If I run all these commands together, we get this beautiful chart. And this is a single command where we are using the pipe symbol. So the pipe symbol is very important in dplyr. You are actually passing the output of one command into another. For example, we have run this command and then passed the information to this command and then passed the information to this command, etc. So let's not get bogged down to this complexity of uh, the code here. Let's get started on the select command. Now, since we saw that our data set looks like this, let's create a simple command. I just want to pick two columns from this. And I'm using the pipe symbol here. So I'm saying D, which is my original data set. Then I'm saying I am piping this to my select command. Now notice that I always try to put the name of the, the package in the front. And the reason is that when you have large number of packages installed then there could be another package which is using the select command and then it clashes and then you are not sure whether it's picking the select from any command from one package or another so my experience has been that i always try to put the full package name in there so if i run this command and if i print that i only have two columns in there admitting hospital and outcome so we have actually run our first dplyr command successfully you could actually run the dplyr select command by just giving the position of the column. For example, this is the first position, this is the second one. So I'm saying select the first column, and I'm not referring to the names, I'm referring to their position in the starter set. So if I run this, and if I bring this up, you have the first two columns there. And I could also do one, two, and three columns. And or I could actually do one, two, and seventh column. If I run this, then you will end up having the first, the second, and the seventh column, which happens to be diagnostic one or diag one. Now, when you need to select a large number of columns, you can also select it by giving the starting position and the ending position. In this case, I'm saying start from the first position and go to the fourth position. So we should actually end up with having the four columns in our data set. So if you look at it, at D3, we have one, two, three, four columns, which happens to be the, the first four columns. Now you could also do another thing. You could simply say, I want the first column, which happens to be admitting hospital. And then I want to have the third, fourth, and the fifth column. And that will work as well. So if I look at D4 now, first column, and the third, fourth, and fifth column. Similarly, if you just wanted to give the names of the columns, the starting column name and the ending column name instead of the position, that will also work. So I'm saying starting from admitting hospital, which happens to be this column, I want to go up to the discharge two columns. So effectively, we are saying one, two, three, four, and five columns starting from the first one. That will work beautifully as well. One, two, three, four, five, starting from admitting hospital to discharge to column. Now what if I only wanted to pick all the diagnostic codes and if I give something like this, 
you would notice that all I'm saying is select all the columns which starts with the character D and let's see what happens. So if I look at a data set D6, we have everything which starts with D. So we got this extra column discharge too because it started with D as well. But we really wanted only the diagnostic columns which start from diag. So instead of saying just starts with D, I'll say I want to pick all the columns which starts with diag. And that'll give us all the columns which start with diag. And do you notice that this is diag1, this is diag3. So diag2 is actually in a wrong position. Though it doesn't really matter, but we can fix that as well. We'll come to that later, but let's start exploring a bit more on the, on the selection. Now, this time, instead of saying starts with, I'm saying ends with. So I want to pick all the columns which ends with the character 1. If I run this, we only happen to get one column because this is the only column which ends with 1. Obviously, you can try multiple criteria as well. This time, we want to pick all the fields which ends with 1 or with 3. We should be actually getting diag1 and diag3 in that result. So let's see what we get. We got diag1 and we got diag3 because these are the two fields which end in the word or character 1 or character 3. Now, if you want to search for a pattern in the middle instead of the starting or the ending, you can also do that. So if I want to pick the columns which contain age, maybe at the starting or at the end or at the middle, that should do the trick. So diag 10 has picked up age and years. But you notice that these are the columns where which start with age. So, but we really wanted to demonstrate the power of contains instead of saying starts with, because we could have actually said starts with age and it would have given us the same, same result. In this case, let me do something like IAG. So I'm saying any data field which contains IAG. And if you notice that IAG is contained in mostly in diag columns. So let's see what it does for us. So diag 10 or D10 has given us all the fields which has the character IAG. So that works as well. Now, what if we wanted to remove some column or data field? You could also do that. So instead of saying select, which we did in our first example or second example, we could simply say, I want to select gender but I put a minus in front. So that should select all the columns except the gender, or in other words, it will remove the, the column gender from, from our data set. You can see that gender is now missing from this data set. And mind you that I'm not changing the original data set. I'm always creating a new data set because I'm sending this information or I'm sending the output of this into D11. So my original data set D is still intact. Now in this example, I'm going to remove multiple columns. And I'm giving it a list of columns which I want to remove. So I'm saying gender, age years, and age group to be removed because I've put a minus in front of that. So anything which appears within this would get removed. So if I run this, D12 doesn't have those columns. Now, if you notice that the name is admitting hospital, and what if I wanted to make it a bit more user friendly? I can do that by when I'm selecting those columns, I can say, look, my column name is ad admitting hospital, but I want to select this into a different name. I just want to call it first hospital. Notice that I've actually given a space there. So when you give space, you, you will have to use this back or inverted um, quotes there. And I'm also saying that instead of the diag1, call it as diagnostic under a diag underscore primary or primary diagnostic. So if I run this, you would see that it still has two columns, so D13, but the name has been changed to what we wanted. Now, of course, you have another command called rename. You could 
do the same thing with there as well. So, and this is the example of the power of uh, dplyr where you can chain the command. So I'm sending the output of this command to this command, and then you can keep on going. So I'm selecting admitting hospital and diag. Then I'm saying the diag one column should be renamed to diagnostic zero one. So the rule is always this. So new name and the old name. So if I run D14, I have admitting hospital and diagnostic 01 because we, we asked it to change diag1 to diagnostic 01. Now, if you're not happy with the position of the columns, remember we talked about uh, diagnostic 2 being at the wrong spot. You can see diagnostic 1 instead of 2, 2 happens to be there. We can fix it. So let's start with something simple first. I'm saying relocate outcome. Now, what does that do? It's going to move the column out outcome to the first position. So if you don't specify anything and say relocate, it's going to take whatever column you specify to the front or to the first location. Now let's change the order of the diagnostic column. So what we are saying is, I want to relocate the diagnostic two column before diagnostic three. So the system is going to go and look for diagnostic three and then put the diagnostic column two before that. So let me go and run this D16. And D16, you can see starting from diagnostic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have actually fixed the, the, the location. So we can also use, instead of saying before, you also have after command. So remember that before and after is preceded by a dot. So you would have put a dot in the front and say dot after or dot before. If I run this, age years is after the age group. And that's what we wanted. You can also relocate the columns based on their class. So the class could be character class or a factor or numeric. In this case, we are saying relocate where the column or the field is character. So do you remember that when we said relocate, it always put the column to the first or the first position. So let's see what it does. So if I run D18, you would notice that all the character variables starting from admitting hospital up to DAG7 have been moved to the front or the first available location. Now, I could do the same thing with factors, which works in a similar manner. If I run this, you would expect all the factor columns to be in the front now. So D19, so gender is a factor. Outcome is also a factor, and rest of them, uh, age group is also a factor, and all the others are uh, character columns. So the factors have moved to the front. And similarly, the numerics can be moved as well. So in this case, let's see if we had any numeric columns. Yes, we had the age as a numeric column, which has moved to the front of um, the data set now. So with these simple commands, we can construct a more com complicated command by chaining it and using the power of dplyr by using this pipe symbol. We are giving two commands now. We are saying relocate all the characters columns to the, fr to the front. And now we are also saying that relocate the factors after the character columns. So let's run this D21. So D21, you would see that the character columns have to go in the front. So all the character columns are in the front. And then we are saying the factors have to be after the character columns. So the factors which started from gender are after those character columns, so which has worked well as well. So this is the end of the first tutorial on dplyr, which was only covering the select command. And we talked about rename and relocate also. In the next series, we will talk about all the other verbs of dplyr. Thank you very much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.